Hey everyone, MTAS here, and today we're going to be talking about aim assist and why everyone who talks about it for the most part is wrong. That's right. There are so many YouTubers out there saying, The 1K stare is broken! 1K of aim assist! You're bad if you use that gun! Shut the fuck up! Listen, I don't want to be a real dick about this, but I honestly have to be. And I really should have done this about a month ago to try and shut people up sooner, but Anyone who's discussing this is a little bit lost, and I'm going to tell you why. And you can argue this as many ways as you want, but I have a few things that maybe you don't know that I'm going to fill you in on, and you're going to go, oh, well, shit. So if we're talking about aim assist, period, if you look at the gun I'm us using right now, it is a year one supremacy. This thing is the aim assist king. It's got short gaze snapshot. It's got like 60 aim assist, something like that. It's really, really high. It's, I think it's actually higher than the 1K stare. And do I land some shots here that look a little suspect? Maybe, but for the most part, these shots are all hitting his head. What aim assist does is it doesn't curve bullets. I don't care what you say, we have tested in the crucible. Um, you know, Patrick from Planet Destiny has lined up shots right near their head, and if it's not hitting their head, it doesn't count as a headshot. I mean, yes, there is a small uh, invisible hitbox, and when they're strafing, things are affected that way. That's in every game. If you look at Halo, if you look at Call of Duty, there are hitbox issues with every single gun out there. But this thing is not going to curve your bullets. What aim assist does is it actually slows down how long your reticle is on their head if you're doing a sweep shot. So if I'm dragging it across your face and you have a high aim assist gun, then it's going to stay on your face for a fraction of a second longer. Is it huge? No, but it's enough with a skilled player to give them a pretty big advantage. I'm not even going to lie there. If I use a Praetis Revenge and try to do some drag shots compared to a 1k stare, it's not going to land as many times as I would like. Now, the thing I also want to discuss is this is a learned skill. This is a uh, sniping is not an easy thing. Everyone who's complaining about it doesn't even snipe. Lots of them are just shotgun users. And if you want to land a shot like that, you have to fucking practice. Okay, you don't just pick up a 1k stare, walk into the crucible, and out snipe someone who's practiced. I don't care who it is. I'm not even talking about people like me and Hovi that honestly use snipers as a primary. I'm talking about the guy that comes home after work and plays three or four games of crucible but likes to snipe. You will not outplay that player ever with a sniper just because of aim assist. It just doesn't happen. Now, the final thing I want to talk about, and I really hope I don't get in trouble for this because I did sign an NDA back in the day, is I do have some insider info. I played the Taken King early, I talked to devs about it, I worked, or sorry, went to the Red Bull event and I played PvP there against some of the other PvP players, and we noticed some changes the second we got there. When we started sniping, there was more flinch. When we started sniping, we missed shots that we felt we shouldn't miss, and it's because they did change aim assist and flinch. And I wanted to verify, so I did talk to some of the Bungie devs, and I would sign an AF of David. If you don't know what that is, that means that if I sign an AF of David and they find out I'm lying, I could be in a lot of legal trouble. I would sign an AF of David saying, I talked to a developer and asked them, did you change aim assist? And they said, yes, we dropped it dramatically because it was too high. And I would sign an AF of David saying, did you, ch when I asked them, did you change flinch? And they said, yes. We did change flinch. It was too easy to shoot people while under fire. They made sniping harder. And so anyone that's coming in and saying, oh, 1K stare is broken. No fucking way. It's harder to use 1K stare than it was to use the LDR or the Supremacy back in the day. And I mean, I understand that it might be frustrating getting sniped over and over again in games. And in trials, there are a lot of snipers, but it's because... There's some people out there that have been sniping their whole life. They've never been using shotguns. And now that shotguns are nerfed, they are thriving because they don't have these people using crutch weapons sliding in and killing them from a mile away. They're able to backpedal. They're able to use it in great angles. And at this point, snipers are dominating because they deserve to be. A lot of them are very good practice players. And if there are people going into PSN messages and Xbox messages and saying, Oh, you're bad for using the 1K stare and sniping, high aim assist, yada yada yada. Fuck those guys. Honestly, they need to just grow the fuck up because people that are good at sniping have practiced for hours, kill hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of people with their sniper, and they deserve to be playing well in this meta. Snipers are good, absolutely. 
but it's not because they changed things or made them OP, it's because they made other guns weaker. They nerfed shotguns and made them somewhat acceptable at this point, so no shit snipers are going to feel a little bit stronger. It's, it's, you know, comparative bias here. I just want to defend those people that have put in the effort, have sniped, and they deserve to be doing well from all the harassment that they're getting and being told that they're bad because they use a certain sniper. It's just, it's unacceptable at this point, and I feel bad for anyone that is harassing people online. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Bye-bye.